Hello and welcome, my name is Peter Spielvogel. I lead product marketing for SAP Screen Personas here live at TechEd 2014 in the ASUG News Studio. I'm joined by two special guests who are SAP Screen Personas customers. I've got Shane Kelly from RHism and Patrick Conklin from Kiwit. Welcome and thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thanks. I don't know about you guys, it has been an amazing show for me. We've had over 500 people attend sessions on Screen Personas. What have been your impressions of the show? I mean, for myself, it's been amazing. I'm surprised at how much user experience stuff there is this year. Uh, so for us, it's perfect. It's right where we're headed with our company. Likewise, we've been really excited to come to the show. Uh, we have a renewed focus on the user experience and seeing the new products and how everything works. It's definitely been a great experience for us. So let's talk about SAP Screen Personas. What's been the big bang in, in your company and how has it helped you? So we're a commodities trading company based out of Toronto. Uh, and for us, time is money. And SAP up to now with SAP GUI has been the big bottleneck for us. Uh, so the faster we can enter trades, the faster we can do more trading. Uh, so Personas has really enabled us to enter trades faster and make margins better. For us, I work for Kiwit, one of the largest construction companies in North America. And we have markets in roadways, gas, chemical, oil, buildings, energy. And for us, it's about all about the user experience, about what the folks in the field, how they perceive the product, and we're using it to kind of get them on board with all the processes that we have, and to also try and reduce the amount of um, clicks that they have currently in the system to kind of get back some of that work that they do right now. So what prompted you to start out, one, with overhauling the user experience, and why SAP Screen Personas? Well, we first saw it at a Sapphire conference, and we're very intrigued by the product. And then we brought in and did a kind of a proof of concept, saw a little bit about the product, and felt that this was something that we needed in our area, because we, again, we're concentrating on the user experience, the product SAP is deployed, and now we just want to make it a more user-friendly system for all the folks in the field. How about you? Yeah, for Chisholm, it's really been a problem entering trades uh, in huge volumes quickly. So for us, we spent a lot of time lately working on new user experience technologies, whether it's business client or personas. Uh, so we've really tried to focus on uh, getting a small group together and doing quick prototypes to like try out these new technologies. So did you go out and just build these flavors for your users and say, this is here's your new one, or was there some sort of collaboration? Yeah, we started that way. I sort of come from the business side, so I start with a quick prototype, and then I bring some SMEs in from various departments, and we sort of look at how they like it, what they suggest we should do, and it's been really crucial for us to see how the users would use what I've built, and uh, I can quickly turn around their suggestions in a few minutes uh, and make some improvements. So it's sort of a iterative design, so we, we're quickly prototyping and breaking things down and rebuilding them all the time, so it's really been a great tool for us that way. And we kind of did the same thing. We leaned toward the business to get most of the information that we needed in order to build the screens. And we kind of started from a transactional level, and then we had to bring it back a little bit and start from a higher level in order to deploy our screens. The transactional level was, it was a little much for us, so, because we had, we any one user can use 30 to 50 to even 100 transactions in a single week, in a, in a day even. So it was a little overwhelming for that. So we scaled it back to give them a front end to where they can actually see their transactions. And the other, the other thing we use it for is to keep them from having to remember all of the transactions. To give a name to a transaction instead of like VA01 or two, call it a sales order, what it really is. Okay. Any big surprises along the way with your journey? Um, there have been lots of surprises in regards to the product, if that's what you're talking about, right? The product, product or process, either way. Yeah, so some of the big surprises is the amount of key clicks that we actually do in a day for a single business process. We didn't, until we dove into it, we didn't realize how long it took to actually create something. Then we worked with the business to find out how long it really takes to create that business process using the SAP key clicks, all the fields and stuff. So that was kind of surprising for us. And then for the product, um, the ability to actually reduce those key clicks, that's very intriguing to us. We haven't got to that level yet, but we're hoping to get to that level at some point in time. 
about you? Yeah, Shane? the biggest surprises for us was when we brought users in to test the prototypes that I had built, just to watch them try to like figure out on their own how to use them. Uh, and I really noticed that a lot of my users still use keystrokes, which I hadn't really thought of when I was building my screens. So now we're kind of rejigging how we're looking at this whole thing to make sure that you know the users who are used to entering trades fast can still use those keystrokes to to do their jobs. So that's. So where where do you see your project in a year? So we're hoping by the end of this year to be uh, live in the trade floor. So uh, and then after that we're moving forward into logistics and other departments. So uh, we're full time. We're moving forward with personas and business client. For us, we we hope to have the. We actually deployed it and we're doing it um, on a job district by district basis. So in a year's time, we hope to have it throughout all of Kiwit, and, and hopefully. We're hoping to reduce a lot of the time spent doing all those key clicks and getting rid of unnecessary fields and screens. So we've got people listening live, this is going to go streaming. What advice would you give someone who's starting out with a user experience transformation project? Personally, I would take your time. Don't rush it. Don't, don't, don't think it's going to solve the world's problems in the UI UX area. Take your time, understand your business, get down to the key clicks and figure out where, where do I need to focus. 20% um, of the transactions that 80% of your people you use, use some type of methodology, get to a point to where you actually go, when you do go to build and reduce those key clicks, you have something in place. Okay, what yeah. advice would you give? And to radiate Patrick, I mean we really had uh, two things. One was to bring the users in early, uh, so just to get their feedback and help help us design these screens with the users that actually will use them. Uh, and same thing for us, like you don't need to build uh, or personas for every single screen your company uses. So really focusing on the you know, top three or top five screens the first time out and then uh, expand from there once there's sort, of, sort of adoption. So same for us. All right, thank you Shane, thank you Patrick. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go out to asug.com, learn about SAP's user experience, Download SAP Screen Personas and get started, but start slowly. Thank you.